Can you believe it has been five years since we said our I do's? I cannot. As you know, I have triple checked many times to make sure that it has been five years. And rest assured, it has been five years. <laughs> Alex got a little bit confused with the math of the years and trying to count them one by one and uh, was like, I think we're celebrating year four right now. Well, it just, I mean, it's moved very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure that there were moments throughout the five years that I was like, man, this is moving slow. But at, as we are coming upon it this weekend, I would say that it flew by. I feel like every year we're like, that's the fastest year ever. This most recent year <laughs> has been the fastest year. Yeah, you're correct. I felt that about each year, though. I can't believe that we're on the tail end of this year. Yeah, the last six months, which is crazy. I feel like this year just started. It did. Seven <laughs> months ago. In my mind, it did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited to do this podcast with you, especially because I've just enjoyed that we both want to talk about our relationship more than anything. We have really built some foundational aspects that allow us to converse about our relationship or some of the things that we're going to talk about today. And I've just always loved that you're willing to grow together with me. So it makes me excited. Hopefully, maybe someone else relates to it or enjoys it. But I know I'm going to be very thankful just to have this for myself. Of course. And, and I, I think We'll talk on this more, but with the communication and the, the desire to have the conversation, it's something where I realize the health of our relationship is the cornerstone to happiness throughout the entirety of my life because of how much impact we have within um our day-to-day -day life, of course, but mm -hmm. also within the business and so on and so forth. Like if things are not functioning well for us, then everything else is, is not functioning optimally at best and at worst is, is crumbling. So having that understanding and, and understanding that the, the trade-off is being more vulnerable and being willing to have conversation is uh, very worth it to me. I remember Alex Hermosi had said something. It was him or Layla there in an interview talking about marriage. And a big aspect they talked about is wanting the same life or having the same goals for one another. And he had also posted something for like an 80-year-old man gave him advice on having a long marriage, and it was don't get divorced. And I kind of laughed at that of like, okay, haha, -ha, don't get divorced. But it truly does take consistent effort from both sides to want to work together. And it was even just last week that we had a day that we – we had to grow in that day big time. And each of us, I don't even want to say rightfully so, but understandably so, could have reacted and responded differently. And we both chose to grow together and really take our ego out of the equation. We left our feelings in the equation, but in a way that could respect the other person. And I just remember hugging you at the end of the day and thanking you for growing with me because I hadn't had that in a relationship of someone equally putting into it what I was and wanting to reach that end. And I've just appreciated over the past five years plus that you're constantly showing up for our relationship, for me, for yourself to really cherish what we have. I appreciate that. Yeah. And I've loved growing with you. And it's something that we had to learn. It was not something <laughs> that we started our journey with um, because we had those same scenarios and we would lash out at one another in a way that was um, – hurting the other person or was malicious in, in some way. And by understanding that we can grow together and that it's not um, you versus me and, and all those different factors, it's allowed for us to grow so much closer together, but also just weed through the bullshit so much faster mm -hmm. because there's, there's so much um, just silly I don't know, like fussing almost that a lot of, of, uh, maybe couples or, you know, what we had done maybe our first year of marriage that we were able to just kind of bypass in those scenarios and, and move forward. I thought that it would be fun slash helpful. Uh, if we were to go through and talk about what we felt like were the top traits and or qualities that really contributed to our marriage getting to this point and see also how much they line up with one another of if we are both on the same page of thinking this was 
a top thing that really moved the needle. And it can also open up conversation of if you have one that maybe I don't have on my list to be able to discuss how we feel like that fits in. Uh, Because when I was thinking about this podcast, I was really thinking, what do I feel like has contributed to us getting to this spot? And so a few things started to pop into my head and uh, thought that we could start off with that. I agree. I I would say before we get into it, that I would like to put a disclaimer (laughs) that I always have found it weird of people giving like marriage advice. And I don't think that that's what we're doing. I think we're just sharing our experience. And I want to make that abundantly clear is that everyone's relationship is going to be greatly different. And there's going to be things in this podcast that maybe you can apply to your own relationships, but we're not sitting here being like, if you don't do it this exact way, you're an idiot. Like that is definitely not what we're saying and more so just sharing our experience. So go ahead. (laughs) Yes. We want to stay in our scope. Our scope is health and fitness. And right now we're just talking as human beings. So I would say the top thing that's like popped up in my head was communication. And we kind of already graced over that. But communication has absolutely changed. And to even add on to that, it's honest communication. Because there were times that we were definitely communicating in the past, but it was very... Uh, stressed communication because we weren't able to possibly be honest with ourselves or honest with the other person. And so I find that honest conversation and communication is like number one, if not sharing the spot with like a two and a three all up there. I would call it more filtered communication where we were trying to not like trying to not irritate the other person, trying to make sure that the other person was getting what they wanted and also trying to get what we wanted. And so it was kind of like trying to predict what the outcomes Mm -hmm. would be or, or what the responses would be. And so it was never just a straightforward answer. And the, the one thing that we have gotten to within the communication is having the moment to share exactly what we think and the other person not take it personally or take it from an emotional place of he or she is just giving their honest thoughts on the situation. We can work together if we're in a different arena in which this is our belief or this is the direction that we want to go. We can find a common ground if we continue to communicate exactly what our desires are or um, what we're wanting to do or whatever the situation is. And by having that just brutal honesty, as you said, has been very difficult to get to. Mm -hmm. I want to make that abundantly clear is that it's not just a realization of we need to do a better job of this. It's more of I'm wanting to work on this and I need you to also want to work on this. And then over time, you're just going to continue to progress because even at the the five-year marker of being very diligent in doing this, I look forward to when we get to 10, 15, 20, 25, and so on, because I know that I love the strength that we have now, and I'm, but I'm even more excited to see the strength that we have when we get to those you know, deeper markers down the road. I 100% agree. And I think that when it comes to that communication, what we were both struggling with so much was, I don't even want to say like fully committing to someone else, but just being vulnerable in those moments. And I didn't really know what vulnerability truly was until we got married. Like I had been vulnerable with people in the past. I had shown moments of vulnerability for sure, but to truly be in a committed relationship and for our situation of like we are married we're in this together to then have to figure out everything and have to be able to say what you want or how you feel or how something made you feel and especially for two people who are perfectionist and past people pleasers like that was really hard to stand there and ask for something when you wanted someone to just kind of assume what you wanted or wanted someone to just fill your needs without you asking. And I think I had to kind of break down what I thought marriage was or was supposed to be and just take it for what it is. And I mean that in an extremely positive way of marriage can be so beautiful if you give yourself a shot at doing all of those things of showing up, having honest communication, being vulnerable, and having someone that's matching that energy. And obviously, that doesn't mean we agree on everything or we have the same thought process, but it's that we're 
open and willing to have a conversation to get to wherever we need to. And I think the vulnerability is, um, it comes out more once you're more honest with yourself. Because I can only be as vulnerable as I can be with how honest I am with myself. And if I'm not honest with myself, then I can't be more vulnerable with you. And so you're the first person in my life that I have been able to let every guard down and truly just let you in and and not be so worried of what you think of X, Y, and Z thing or whatever. And that also, you know, took time. And, and I would say that by having that vulnerability, it allowed for me to fall more in love with myself as well, to have these things that maybe I was more self-conscious of or um, just uncomfortable with potentially, mm -hmm. and to share that with someone that I care so much about and that I love and, and all those things, to share that and not be like brought back with emotion of anger or frustration or any type of emotion outside of love and care and, and appreciation for just sharing um, was such a special moment for me. And um, being able to have that is another really big factor in why we've uh, grown the way that we have over the five years. I love that you have been able to feel comfortable and just both of us, when I look back, we have grown so much and just speaking up and saying what we want. Cause I, I know I just mentioned this to a certain degree, but the other person isn't a mind reader. And I would think that maybe my actions were obvious if I wanted you to do something or I wanted a certain reaction from you. And it just helped so much when I let that go of maybe what I thought it should be or what I thought you should do and really just tell you what how I'm feeling, what I am feeling like what I'm feeling, how I'm feeling, just all of the range of it, being able to express that so then we can even get to a common ground. And I've even recognized that when it comes to like our intimate relationship of being in a spot where that was never talked about prior. It was never what do you like or what do you enjoy or is this like something that you're enjoying in general? It was just this is what's happening and that's that. And that's allowed us a whole nother level to unlock of just being able to be even more vulnerable in that state um, and being able to release that to the other person. And that vulnerability has allowed us to grow so much closer in moments that I felt that maybe it would push us apart of, well, what if he's not thinking the same thing? Or what if um, he actually doesn't like that? Whatever it may be, it allowed us to grow and become closer because we did become more intimate with that vulnerability. Intimacy is a, a component that I, I think is is taboo in, in some ways and, and people are wanting to stay hush hush on the topic as a whole. And I think that when we when we think about intimacy, it's something where being comfortable, feeling cared for, and feeling heard, I think are, are three massive components. And by having the communication and being willing to share um the things that you enjoy or the things that you are desiring or what have you are, are extremely important. And both parties in that scenario have to be on the same page that each person is equally, um, what's the right word? Equally valuable mm -hmm. in that, in that setting. And, and for, um, both parties to, to feel that way, it just elevates the the level of intimacy as well as the the comfort and all those different factors. And that even brings me to another thing I had written down that I thought was a really important trait was like kindness and patience. And I I think about like the Bible verse that's like love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy. And there are so many words that are used there that I do feel like are needed when it comes to love because in those moments it would have been so easy to have um, emotions, positive or negative, come into play. Or it could have been uh, hard of okay, they might not. Be be ready for this right now. And I felt like I was always given space to navigate what I was going through internally that, to allow us to get to the best space between the both of us. Because I felt that you took things from a vantage point of not, this is what I want and I want it at this time, or this is what I want for our marriage. But it was being able to say, this is what I want and this is how I feel. I understand Sue might not be to that point yet, or she's dealing with something else. 
There's no reason for me to make her feel worse about it or have extra pressure on it. I'm going to give her that space to like feel how she needs to feel. And that was just and is like you still implement that on the daily, I feel like, of being considerate of where my headspace is at and recognizing that where we are living our lives separately but together. And with that comes so many different experiences that lead us to each other that we do need to have kindness and patience at the forefront to be able to just take that next step because there's no way that someone's always on the same page or exactly in the same position as you. And so being able to take that kindness to what they're going through, being considerate, I think is so important. I think that is a message to all my guys listening. <laughs> Dude, just be kind, be patient. And I, like especially in a in a marriage where you are my partner for life. If that is the case, you got all the time. <laughs> It, now, would you like it to be faster? Possibly, probably. But the reality is, is that for that intimate time, whatever that may be for you and your partner, it's something that if you allow for that space and you allow for um, that time to pass and for that conversation to continue to uh, happen and make progressions, then when that time comes, it's going to be so much more special than if you were to try and force and have your way because you want it right that moment, you want X, Y, and Z. It's like, that is not how, you, one, you just treat anyone, <laughs> but especially how you uh, treat your spouse. And so just a side note for all the dudes out there listening, um, that was a that's a huge help for you, <laughs> FYI. <laughs> uh, is there another trait that comes to mind that you feel like is very beneficial or needed when it comes to marriage or our marriage? I would say the desire to grow together as a couple, but also alongside that being the opportunity to grow as the individual. Like as soon as you as the individual stops working on you, it's very difficult for you to grow with your partner because you're not taking the steps to unveil more within yourself to be able to grow with your partner. And so having those two things together is extremely important. And I, I think that when we talk about uh, self-growth, I, I, don't, I don't know really what people what comes to people's mind there. I think that it's very vast, whether it's physical, it's mental, it's emotional health. I think all of them need a little bit of love in, in different ways. And at different seasons of your life, they're going to need a little bit more attention and, and watering. And that's not to say that if, it, if it's your physical health, that the emotional or mental health just go by the wayside. They still need some attention, but your priority may be physical health in a particular season. And so having that self-development is a huge piece of the puzzle. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. I recently saw a post that was just saying that if, you, if you've personally done the inner work, sometimes it can be difficult to be around people that haven't done the inner work because not to say like, oh, they're not vibrating at the same level as you, but to a certain degree, they're not at the place to look inward enough to recognize how much either they have control of different aspects in their life or to also recognize that everything isn't a personal attack towards them and you can have very fruitful conversation if you allow it to be that way. And so I think that being able to really have for ourselves and I think the desire within like our physical fitness and health and we have always had some sort of focus on that mental health has been so good because we can support each other in that and I can give space to you which I did used to struggle with that of giving you more space because I felt that okay we should always be together and spend time together and if he wants to go do something else then I want to do it with him but there is such benefit and just allowing you to also have your life. We do 
so much together and I love our time together. But even just like this morning, if you went to yoga and went for a run, like I'm so glad you had that personal time to really pour into yourself because I know that you can only be the best version of yourself when you do pour into yourself, which also means that I'm going to get a better version of you. So I will always be for you improving on you. Um, But I also love that you can call me on my bullshit when I'm not improving on myself. And we have that accountability. And some of the accountability is so unspoken of, I have so much respect for you and our marriage that I'm going to step up to the plate and do what is needed or asked of me. And I'm not going to let myself fall back or revert to poor habits because I know that you're holding yourself to a certain standard, but also to the degree of flat out saying, hey, you said you wanted to do this and your actions are not reflecting that, or you said you were going to improve on this. I have not seen the improvement and not in a dicky way, but truly, (laughs) truly, I can like feel the love coming from you. Or even if you say it in a way that I might take it the wrong way, you're quick to recognize that and say, hey, I'm not saying it in this way. I just know this was important to you. Is that not the same? I want to touch base. So that's bringing together like the accountability and the communication and that honesty all in together to really allow us to have those type of conversations and allow us to have that space to keep growing. And bringing those things up comes with understanding timing and understanding tone. Like mm-hmm. you, you can't, one of the, one of the mistakes that I made early on in our relationship was bringing those things up as you made a mistake on those things. It's like, well, you said you were going to be doing better with this. Obviously you're not and you suck. And <laughs> <laughs> um, that's not the way to go about it. And, and bringing it up in the right way or the right time, but also having a tone that's coming from a nurturing and caring way of this was a priority to you. You said you wanted to improve. What are, what are the things that are holding you back from this relative to just outlining the thing that the person already knows that they want to do better with and they know that they're not doing better with. And so, um, yeah, the, the quality of the communication has improved tremendously and just learning more about one another in the sense of how we, we prefer to be communicated with in times of higher stress or whatever the situation is, just understanding and, and taking note of those things, not just, um, you know, oblivious, obliviously going through life, um, as you're, you know, navigating through things, because there's a lot of important things that just you can pick up on to better uh, communicate with your partner. Do you feel like being business partners allowed us to catapult ourselves when it came to communication, or do you feel like it hurt us when it came to communication? I think that it forced us to have better communication because I very quickly realized as we began working together that if we were going to work together, then the everything at home had to be in order for that to work. And if everything at home wasn't in order, then work was also going to be crazy. And with how much I work, (laughs) how much we work, that would just mean I have a miserable life. (laughs) That would mean that almost every hour of my day is a shit show. And I don't want to do that. And I am huge on understanding the trade-offs, understanding the the pros and cons and, and the, the value of the decisions that I'm making. And so understanding that, as I said earlier in the episode, like, dude, I, there's no way that I don't prioritize this. This is, this is now my number one target. I'm not trying to have a shit day <laughs> for the entire time that I'm awake. Yeah. No, thank you. I, I will work at this. And so having that understanding, it was, it was huge. I think that the first year of marriage showed me that a lot of just this isn't the day-to-day I want to have. And I'm honestly choosing to have this day-to-day with the way that I'm communicating or lack of communication, the response that I'm taking, uh, bringing my ego, trying to win conversations or trying to get back at you for something, uh, for maybe even something you didn't even know that I was upset or frustrated about. There was so much that just came from not being willing to just drop it and come together and want to work on it as a couple and find an answer. And that changed absolutely everything from something that just felt like, oh my gosh, what is the day-to-day? How do I communicate with this person? And 
get this to where I want to, to truly being in a place that I look over at you very frequently and just tell you how much I love you or how glad I am that we're married or how thankful I am for something that you do for me, something as simple as picking the seats at the end of the row for the baseball game because you know I'm going to want to go to the bathroom multiple (laughs) times and you know that I don't want to be a bother to other people. It's like the, the little things and the big things all matter, but it's the little things that really make a life on a day to day. And you already mentioned it of paying attention to the other person. And I think that attention for the other person is so important in a marriage because not only are you able to get to know them better, which hopefully is a goal of someone's when it comes to marriage, but you're also able to learn about them, learn about how they respond to situations, learn how they might need to be talked to or cared for in a situation and just having empathy for that person of you might not understand what they're feeling or what they're going for going through but you can be there for them in a way that might make them feel comforted or just make them feel like heard and cared and valued about where at the beginning I remember you didn't understand like gift giving yeah. as much and I loved giving gifts and I loved receiving gifts and I remember one time I stopped at like a gas station or somewhere and I brought you home like a monster and I was like oh I have something for you I was so excited and you're like okay And you just like took it and set it down. And I was like, what the crap? I just thought I was very thoughtful of he's going to want an energy drink. He really likes this one. Maybe we're out of it at home, whatever it may be. And you were just like, I don't really get gifts. Like I'm not the person that's going to be excited about this kind of stuff. And you're laughing so much right now because now you love giving and receiving gifts and being able to pour into that. And that came from understanding what was important to me and why it was important to me and not just looking at it as I could care less about gifts and this girl better get over it. It was why do gifts matter to her? It's it's not something that's super superficial. It's not something that she just wants to be showered with stuff, but you know, that's fine if that's true. Uh, But (laughs) it's really understanding of like, oh, that person feels love and maybe I don't feel it the same way, but I have to be aware of how they receive and how they give love so that I can either receive or give love to them in that way. I love that. You're correct. (laughs) I I did not understand gifts before we got married and early stages of us being married. Um, I did not understand it, but now very much so understand it. (laughs) Uh, You guys are hearing us reference the first year of marriage a decent bit here. And I think that it's important to give some context as this podcast did not start until we were about year three. So, right? Year three? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Um, So first year of marriage. Well, let's even backtrack further of we dated for how long? We dated for six months before Alex put a ring on it. So we dated for six months, long distance, and um, drove six hours every other weekend more me driving to her don't let uh, you know <laughs> this boy we we split the time six hours a, a piece and i still have ptsd from yes. making that drive to go see my parents now um so we we did that for six months and i bought a ring for sue probably three months into us dating um i was infatuated with her we oh, could go even further back right into the story so. um but i was infatuated with her from the moment i saw her literally um i <laughs> yeah i i was nothing's changed and i love it <laughs> literally. literally marry the person who's obsessed with you yeah <laughs> unless they're creepy which i don't think i did i get into a creepy no, i mean window? that's the thing it's like if i am if i like you then it's not creepy but if I don't like you, then I might have Could've found some of it creepy. Interesting. But that's the that's the thing. It's the difference is how the person perceives it. So I didn't find it creepy because I enjoyed it. Yeah. And six I like year, you. Six years later. So that's <laughs> good that I wasn't creepy then. Um, and then we hadn't lived together until we were married. Yes. And so it was a massive transition. We were both living in a new area to both of us um, around new people, new friends, and trying to figure out what living together was like, as well as splitting duties, splitting bills, all these different things, Um, and and figuring out how to communicate around those things. It was a whirlwind of change for two young kids who were 22 and 21, Mm -hmm. 20, yeah. And at this point, I was 
I moved back in with my parents after I graduated college. And then when we got married, moved in together. And that's when I went full time with personal training and doing everything online. So it was also that I was going full time. You had gone full time a few months prior, but a huge change in our life and a lot of different stuff going on. Yeah. And and two two people who were still trying to figure them themselves oh, yeah. out big time. I didn't know myself well at all at that time. And that's always the interesting thing for me as a, a small t- side tangent here is people encouraging to like know themselves before you start to meet the the person of your dreams and it's like dude I <laughs> I'm so great. You you helped me learn more about myself. You helped me discover myself and I wouldn't have gotten to this place without you. And so that's always the thing that blows my mind of if I waited, I'd have been waiting my whole life because I ain't <laughs> gotten here by myself. And so I mean, it was it was two people trying to figure it out. And um, we we battled for one another. We loved one another enough to to work through that year. And I'm so grateful that we did. Um, but it was a it was a hard year. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a hard year. I, I think that we can both agree. And we've we've had conversations on this before that if we did not have the uh, aspect of being married, it would have been easy for either of us to walk away at different times throughout that year. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I'm the, the gratitude I have for, for fighting through that period of time is, is endless because I would have none of what I have right now, uh, if it wasn't for fighting through that. And so I would do it if, if that meant to have what I have now, I would do it 10 times over. Oh, easily. Easily. I mean, it's, it, it was a time that I felt so, confused and yes. lost but also i i felt so much love but i wasn't feeling i i wasn't understanding everything that was going on and like you said we were trying to figure ourselves out and i think that that's another quality is like that trust that you can have in someone because i had been scarred by so many either past relationships or past situations and i was still dealing with my own inner wounds from childhood and growing up that i couldn't have an honest conversation with you or with myself to move the needle forward and i had to have trust in you that we're we're in this together and we're figuring it out and not allowing myself to push you away just to protect myself from getting hurt and that comes back to that vulnerability of there were so many times that I didn't want to have to be vulnerable. I just wanted to everything to be okay. I wanted to brush something under the rug. I didn't want to have the conversation and I didn't want to know what was on the other side of the conversation. I honestly wanted to just walk away from the conversation and being in a spot where we were able to pour into that vulnerability and just trust that the other person was working for the same thing. And that also just led to so much trust within our relationship in general, because with with our line of work, like you're you're looking at half dressed women all day, <laughs> and that used to be something that yeah. really was a struggle for me. I trusted you so much, but it was so difficult to see these girls tagging you in pictures where they might be they might not be recognizing that they're posing in a way that's uh, suggestive or sensual, and I'm seeing this, and then I'm dealing with my own ins- my insecurities that I wasn't vocalizing of how I felt in my body or how I felt desired, and then trying to navigate through you talking with all of these women. And it is something that you have always been someone who has said, I don't want there to be any room for misinterpretation. Mm-hmm. And I've loved that so much about you and for myself because it it's what I needed when it came to validation. I didn't need there to be any suggestive nature to what was going on. I needed it to be a clear, it's me and you, and then there's work and there's a huge professionalism towards this. And it made me laugh because the other day you were asking of like, oh, do you feel like I put a lot of thought into X or Z? And I was like, you literally sit around for 10 minutes deciding on an emoji to use because you're afraid of a second meaning for an emoji, yeah. posting it or using it with a client and it coming across the wrong way. Like, I think you're all good, my man, on coming across and being respectful to other people. And that, like, trust that I had in you and you held up to because you knew how important it was, was, it was and is always so appreciated. Yeah, I mean... it. 
it is something for me where I love my work. I really, really enjoy my work. And um, I, I have never had a, in the eight years of doing this, I have never had anyone misinterpret what I'm saying when I'm working with, with women, it, it's, there's not been an, a moment where that's been misinterpreted. I, I can't even, as you were talking through that, I was trying to think of a scenario <laughs> and I don't think that I've had that. Um, and it's just been such a priority for me throughout my career in the space. But I also think that how close I am and, and was with my grandmother, with my mom, um, growing up with my sister, like I, and, and having the, uh, women in my life that are friends and, and all that attribute to how well I, I do in the space and it being so cut and dry and clear of what my intentions are, because I just, I have a lot of women in my life that are amazing people and that have uplifted me and put me in a position where I can be a better version of myself. And so I'm just, you know, grateful for the opportunity to work with the people that I do and immensely grateful to have a partner that understands that gratitude and that there's no blurred lines to that. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm like always thankful for the people in your life and how you're raised for that reason of you have so much respect for women. And that circles back to what we were saying earlier, even when it comes to intimacy of allowing me space and having respect for me as an individual, as a woman, and as your wife, that there is a certain level of, um, like there's just a certain level of respect between us, but like you in general, you do have such respect for women and you care about my feelings and you put me, you like, you uplift me, you praise, like you do everything that I could even desire to have when it comes to someone caring for me as an equal as well, because you haven't ever looked at it as like, you're the female or you're the woman in the relationship, you do X, Y, and Z, or I'm the male and this is what I do. We've been able to break down a lot of those gender roles because of the roles that those really influential women had in your life. And to close up that topic, I've always been a little cautious to even talk about this in the sense of um, the respect that I have for women, because I I do feel from a, I guess, more global standpoint is that when men are making that comment, it's generally to cover up that they're not. Yeah. And so then I just greatly prefer <laughs> Just watch my actions. <laughs> I will tell you exactly what I mean. And I don't have to sit here and tell you what I mean. Mm -hmm. And, but I, you know, it's obvious through my actions that that is the case, but that's also why I have been deterred from talking about it because I feel like the vast majority of people who do talk about it are not the ones who are actually doing it. Yeah. It's like the typical, like, I'm a good guy. And it's like, are you? <laughs> right. But you are for, for sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, with talking about things like from our past that might have come into our relationship, I think that that's an aspect I wasn't wasn't expecting maybe coming into marriage is that I maybe just had this vision or this fantasy of what marriage was. And I didn't really think down to the nuts and bolts of like, hey, I have stuff going on internally that I have to work on, or maybe just the environment or the way that I was raised differs from this other person I'm now living with and trying to figure out life with. And so I think that taking ownership of the stuff that we have had going on has been so helpful for us to extend grace where it's needed and to have an update of where the other person is at, um, as well as just to bring it to a conversation. Um, so one like thing that I can think of in regards to like us growing up differently is that you grew up and for like the end of the evening, everyone kind of went off on their own and did their own thing. Where my family was that it was family time when we were all together and that's what we're doing. And coming to like our first year of marriage, you would go off and do your own thing. And I was kind of like, it's time to hang out. What is he doing? And I was always so confused and felt hurt by something. So was I. 
by something you didn't even know. Right. And you were kind of like, we just hung out all day. What do you mean we're supposed to keep hanging out during this time? I'm going to go and do what I want to do with relaxing for myself. And we had to really figure out what it meant for us and our relationship for how we wanted to spend our time or even have that alone time. Because I've always been very pro of you having that, whether that's like for this specific scenario, it was gaming of I'm I'm all for you having time to game and I do that. I would say at that time, though, well, not so much. But now, maybe not yes. the way that you were. But in general, no. like I've always been a proponent of you keeping that in your life to some degree. Sure. And you've always had a good pulse on when it's adding or taking away from your life. So it wasn't that I don't want you to ever game or have fun without me, but it was figuring out, hey, we're two people that had completely different experiences, and now we have to figure out what that means for us. I miss the period of, of time in my life where I could game. It's, yeah, it's something I would love to bring back into my <laughs> life. <laughs> Oh gosh, get Maybe, some one maths, bruh. <laughs> Maybe one day. Maybe um, one day. Yeah, I, I think that that's something that I'm very grateful that we have waited to embark on the journey of having children because we're able to work through some of these things prior to having children. Because I think that with having that component makes those conversations or those instances and, and not being on the same page even more challenging. Um, so yeah, it was, it's a challenging bit though, for sure. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. What do you feel like is something that you have matured in in our relationship when it comes to love or uh, possibly one of these traits or just even taking it back to something that you used to do that now you don't do when it comes to our relationship? And I am the I am the best version of myself to date, today. Can confirm. So I would say across all metrics, things have improved. I've I've learned the most about myself probably in the last two years. Um, the last two years have been painfully transformative for me. Um, I would have loved for that transformation to require less tears and hard conversations and inner work that it has come with, but that is just part of the equation. And um, things that I have gotten significantly better with, I would say, patience in general. I know that you highlighted that as something that I have done a great job of, but I would not say that that is an attribute that I've had for a lifetime. I, I think that I learned that through my love for you, uh, for uh, realizing that patience is kind of earned to a degree. Mm -hmm. to, to give people grace and patience comes from respect and, and love that's shared, in, in my opinion and in my experience, I suppose. And so I, I have found a, a level of patience and care for another person that I did not know could exist. Um, also, just a, uh, I guess, a inner drive to build the life that I want and understanding that it's, it's, I'm capable of those things alongside you. I, I feel as though that the, the weaknesses that I carry from a personality perspective or, or attributes, you fill those. And I feel with those things filled that there's nothing that can hold me back. And, um, so everything. <laughs> wow. I love that. And I love you. <laughs> What do you feel like allowed you to become the best version of yourself then? Like what, if you could just be like, oh, like, yes, Sue and marriage added me to that. But what in that really facilitated that change? I think that letting my ego go, and um, I don't love saying that because it's, I feel like it's a buzzword mm -hmm. of people being like, let go of your ego and you're going to, you're whole life is going to be unleashed. It's like, shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> but I would say that I was someone who was not in contact with my emotions. I had such a strong level of suppression of my emotions and lack of desire to show any emotion um, because I wanted to be strong and I wanted to be like nothing bothered me and I was phased by nothing. And that was a facade. And I think coming to the realization that that was a facade and understanding that I could get to a place where I really only cared about 
myself and the people that I cared about the most. And I can get to a point where I'm not secretly so insecure about all these different things. And I can really just focus on the things that matter to me the most. Understanding that was kind of the thing that unlocked it. And then it was like, how do I reverse engineer myself to get to this point? What are the steps that I need to take to get there? And those things were improving my communication with you, improving my communication with myself and how I talk to myself. Um, am I doing the things that I want to do? And, and if I'm not, why is that the case? What is, what is holding me back? Is it just a, a silly fear because of someone's opinion or, or judgment? Um, or is it something that I, I want to do, but I don't have the bandwidth or desire to do and mm-hmm. being able to, de- to decipher between those things. Um, yeah. And, and also just like having a greater belief in myself, maybe, um, I, I think that you also allowed for me to believe in myself more. Uh, as we, when we met, my my coaching was at the place that it was. Um, I wasn't full time. I had a a decent sized roster, um, but it wasn't anything that I would call special. And as you and I um, were dating and then got married, you introduced me to a a lot of the clients that were able to put me on the map, if you will, that gave me an opportunity to showcase my abilities to a a greater audience or um, have greater results with some of these individuals. And that was, that was, you know, something that I will forever be grateful for. And one of the things that we've, you know, battled through over the the five years um, is like the, component of like, we'll, we'll talk a little bit from a a financial standpoint. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. So from a financial standpoint, I was making more money if we were to compare apples to apples, which never has been, I shouldn't say never. It was a hurdle for us in our first year Mm -hmm. where there would be times where I would try and be malicious and like hold that over your head. And I fucking hate that now. And I hate that I was that way. And that makes me really sad to think back to that time because I haven't had that thought in a long time. I kind of forgot about it, to be honest. I'm glad. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So with that, that was a a hurdle for us to work through because that was very challenging on your side to have that kind of, would it be inferiority? Yeah, or just like um, you're, you're already feeling uh not invalidated but lesser, lesser than. than yeah i would say and that. so then it just feels like it is this complex of okay you're doing less you're you're not contributing as much as me and it can feel like there's a big imbalance there of one person is above the other and the reason i bring that up is because i've always thought since that time that like none of the opportunities that I've had to make the the money and the make the opportunities that have been presented for physique development would be possible without you. And so that was always kind of the thing that I came back to. And I think that once we both were on that same page and understood that the opportunities and the, the finances and all those things would not be possible without both of us contributing in the ways that we do, um, would have been very challenging if we hadn't gotten to that place. Yeah, I mean, I think that, Because like I was thinking on this question, I didn't have like a right answer loaded for it, but I was truly asking myself, like, I I am the best version of myself. I do not want to go back to who I was. I'm very happy with the growth that I've had. And I do often say like Alex changed my life and being getting married changed my life of being able to have that happen. But when I dig into why did that change my life, it came from this feeling of and I don't even know if unconditional is the right word, but like just extreme love and support from you. And that's how I was able to grow and change because I, I had that from my family, and I would never deny that. They had so much love for me and raised me with so much love, but I hadn't felt that from someone who chose that, to like fully love me for me. And we've said it before, but like you're the person who knows me the most, like knows the sides of me that I don't want a light shown on or the thoughts that I don't want anyone else to hear. 
you know all of those and you're the person that loves me the absolute most. And that gave me so much confidence just to be me. I felt so much beforehand that I was always trying to be someone else. I was trying to like act, not even act as someone else, but just be something else than I was. I didn't feel comfortable being myself. And you really brought me out of me. And I think that going back to what you said of like finding yourself first before a relationship, I definitely think some people might need to do some inner work before yeah. getting to a relationship, especially based on what your experience has been, maybe what trauma you haven't dealt with. Um, and like you, you might have to deal with some of that stuff first. But in our case, and just speaking for us, we were both in a place that we had such love, respect, and we looked up to one another when we entered our marriage that even through that very hard first year, we still had at the root of it of like, I'm going to be there for that person. And even though there were times where we were both spiteful, we both tried to get back at each other, we both said things that we didn't actually mean, I still knew that at the core of it, there there was so much love and grace for me as an individual. And so it just allowed me to feel comfortable with being me. And you just gave me so much support and still do to this day. Like you are my biggest cheerleader. Like you're my biggest fan. You want so much success for me that it, it doesn't come down to the petty shit most of the time. We're still human beings, so it happens. But it doesn't come down to any of that. And even talking about finances, like there's been multiple times throughout the five years, not just that first year, that we've struggled when it came to having communication about finances because we both grew up in different environments when it came to talking about money. And it also came from a place where you felt the male was supposed to be the breadwinner and maybe I was supposed to do something else. And we had to figure out what that looked like between the two of us. And I've been so grateful because with talking about kind of breaking down different gender roles, I always got frustrated when someone would make a comment about like how I cooked or cleaned and being like, see, a wife is supposed to do yeah. that. And I would just be like, you don't even freaking get it. It's not because I'm the woman and I'm the wife and I'm just supposed to do it. It's we have both sat down and decided what tasks make sense for the other person to do. And we're both in this together to make it happen. And you don't hold it or haven't held it over me of, okay, I might have made more money or done this, that was more, or I was at my desk more. And we don't get into those situations where we're nitpicking at each other because we both know regardless of who's bringing in what money both of us are giving so much into this that no one feels taken advantage of or no one feels that they have to hold something over the other because they know the other person's meeting them right there in front of them and giving that which leads us into a great question is marriage 50 50 you know, I recently saw a clip of Brene Brown talking about this, and I loved her explanation of saying that it's really about adding up to 100. And it's not just about, did you give 50? Did I give 50? Or even did I give 100? And did you give 100? It's realizing that we are a team. And I I think it's, uh, I laugh a little bit because whenever I think about you, like, yes, you're my spouse, you're my husband, but when I think about like a word that really encapsulates like what you are to me, like you are like my partner or my teammate, like you are right there next to me doing it all with me. And sometimes you got to pick up for your coworker or for your teammate because you care about the bigger goal at hand. And I'm thankful that we've always cared about the bigger goal. And there's been times where I've walked up and I'm like, I got friggin' 10 to give today. And you're like, pile it on. I'm going to take it and we're going to get through this day or vice versa. Or there's been times where we both come to the table and it's like, I got five today, what you got, strong 10. And it's about like figuring out how we can approach those situations with love for each other. Of We both know we're at the end of our rope, 
we both are still showing up and it is not going to help anything to project any frustration onto the other person. And I can just think of a million examples and especially with working together and filming together and everything that we do where one person has to pick up for the other person and neither of us are holding tally of that ever. It's literally just you need this right now, I've got you. And not because I know that you've got me later, but just because I've got you and you don't have to worry about keeping score. So I also think it's because you know that I will get you later if you need it. Yeah, Like it's, it's a trust that you know that I will show up for you in the same way down the road. And the, the way that that would be tarnished is that if you had that trust and then I just went against it. Yeah. I was like, nah, not today. I, I you got it yourself. You got to figure it out. <laughs> like we just continue to, um, it, it, it's, it's tit for tat in a different way mm-hmm. because you are, are trusting that that person is going to get you when you need it to. Um, that leads me to another part in which I feel is really important of, of the attributes or, or things that we have within our relationship in which being okay with saying sorry. Mm-hmm. Like being okay with saying sorry and taking ownership of mistakes that have been made or or things that were said that were um, in the heat of the moment or whatever the situation is. Like showing up and just being like, yo, this is my fault. I apologize. This is why this happened. I will I will work to not let this happen again in the future. Um, and just you know, being very honest in that moment has been such a big help because I think early on in our relationship, even like before – our relationship. I don't think that I really understood how to say sorry or to like apologize with true sincerity. It was like, you hit your sister, you need to say sorry. And it's like, sorry. (laughs) Uh, And then, you know, five days later, the same, we're, we're bickering again type situation and really finding a a way to, to take that ownership and and to apologize in a way that you truly mean it of, I I do actually apologize for this and I'm going to be better moving forward um, and embodying that, like really living up to it because we do call each other on um, those moments where we apologize for things. And if, if either of us were to make the mistake again or to do the same thing, we're like, yo, you You literally, you said sorry for this and then you're doing it again. What's the deal? And then we are able to hash that out and have deeper conversation on it. And so I think that that's huge. Yeah, I think it's the ability to apologize and to forgive yes. and accept the apology because we we can't be perfect. And I think that one thing that we've done in the past few years that we didn't do to begin with is we forgive each other when we're not the best versions of ourselves. We don't hold that against each other. We don't accept perfection. We accept each other's flaws. And we know that we're not going to be perfect. And there's times where maybe I say something I don't mean or I project something onto you that you don't deserve. And we are so quick now to apologize of saying, you didn't deserve to have that. I'm angry about something else, like, I'm sorry that I did that. And you can, like, and we both understand of, like, it's okay for you to still be frustrated because you really didn't deserve to be treated that way. So it's not kiss and make up and everything's 100. It's, hey, I thank you for the apology. I accept it. It's still freaking hurtful that you did that. Wasn't fair to me, but, like, let's move forward from this. And I think that's been invaluable of just being able to do that. Sometimes we even over-communicate and you get annoyed, understandably so, because I will just, like, say something. I'll be, I'll give, like, six disclaimers. And you're like, I got it the first time. And I'm like, I just wanted to make sure that you read that the right way because I know how it could have been read another way. And while it can be frustrating, like— I don't think that's the same category. Well, you don't? No, I do not think those disclaimers are the same category (laughs) because I think those disclaimers are like society ruining your brain because you're like, (laughs) I have to give a caveat to – if you thought of it this way, I want to make sure that you knew I was talking about it this way. It's like we all understood that that's what you were trying to say. I guess that's true, but I will say that I'm just thankful that you are – willing to tell me how you're even feeling in those situations. I don't have, there's not this, oh, there's this passive thing going on. He said he wasn't upset, but he is upset. It's like, at this point, we say what we want and we say what we need and we mean it. It's not, oh yeah, I'm fine and everything's fine. It's like, if I say I'm fine, I fucking mean it. And you better mean it because we both know we hold that for one another. Because if you're going to tell me something and you're going to say you're fine, then I'm just going to let it be. 
Yeah. I'm not going to further investigate and be like, no, tell me, tell me, <laughs> come on, come on, let's get it out. Like, I'm not going to do that. And, yeah. and it's a waste of both of our times to have that kind of conversation to it. And there are times where you say that you're fine. And I understand that in the moment, it is not the time to have the conversation. And I need to revisit it potentially later. And we just need to temper the waters for whatever our environment is, wherever our situation is at the moment. And when we get to a, a place that we can be more private or what have you, then we can have the conversation. Mm -hmm. And so there's different scenarios where that may actually still apply. But in the grand scheme of things, when you say it, you mean it, we move forward. Mm -hmm. Which I am so thankful for because I ain't trying to play Bro, detective. I not, I don't have the, like, and that's the other thing is that we are both – respectful of the bandwidth that the other person has. Don't be playing some dumb shit game with yeah, me don't play to games. try and like get me to think deeper or <laughs> I shouldn't like walk away from a conversation with you and be like, is that what she meant? Or did she mean this? Or did she mean, it's like, no, no, you said what you meant and I know what you meant and we're just going to move forward. <laughs> like it's the best way to go about things. And I do feel like one of the huge things that helped us was having intentional time to just talk to one another, yeah. where it's very easy to get into the routine of you've had your day and for a quote unquote average couple, you're likely not working together in the same space. You've had your separate day. You come to each other at the end of the night. You're both understandably tired. Maybe you have low bandwidth from work, children, whatever it may be. And it's very easy to go to just watching TV. And I by no means am demonizing TV. I love me some TV. No, you do. <laughs> But I think that once we started to have time without the TV, and it, it was really just prioritizing just even 30 minutes of talking to each other. It wasn't, we can't watch TV until we've spent 20 hours unhashing our emotions together. It's just, we could end up talking about bullshit, or we could end up talking about something serious. It could be 30 minutes, or it could stretch longer. But we always gave ourselves at least that like 30 minutes to talk to be able to really grow in our relationship. And because we both came to that time understanding that it was time to be present, it really allowed it. Like we've had so many conversations during that time that have moved us forward or moved us like singularly forward or together forward that have been monumental for us. Yeah. And it's, it's seasonal to a degree where we'll have moments where we do spend a ton of time out there and we're really deep into conversations and those different things. And then sometimes it's really just being present with one another. It's not always that we even talk. It's just yeah. like being there with one another. Um, we can listen to music, we can hang out and just be present. And that's, that's enough sometimes. And that, that sometimes when we're just like, we're here and yeah. we're just going to have music playing and we're just going to kind of both just stare off into the <laughs> ceiling, um, is when we're extremely run down from work, which is a, a season that we've had as of late. So it seems a little bit more, uh, recent, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but I, I mean, I just am very thankful for all the things that we've implemented within our marriage to show up for each other and the consistent dedication to communication, like trust, honesty, vulnerability. I don't have to question any of those with you. And it, it's never like I always feel so connected to you, even in conflict of knowing that we are going to get to a solution. We're not fighting just to fight or for one of us to win or the other one to lose, it's no matter what, we're going to get this figured out. And that understanding from your end and my end is, in my mind, what makes all of this work is just that continued commitment and dedication to one another and what this marriage means. And also recognizing we can have so much more joy in our life by just facing some of these walls that might have been up before. Uh, so I think that like honest and vulnerable communication are like top dogs for me of this is what really brought us close and allowed us allows us to stay close. I agree 100%. And I'm having, I have to pee really bad. So we're going to wrap this up. But I think for the listeners who uh, have stuck around this long into the episode, I think they should be rewarded with the opportunity to hear what are your top three pet peeves that I do? Oh my gosh, I need to pee right now too. <laughs> um, can I say what I think that my pet peeves for you are? Uh, I think that may be a little too easy, but go ahead. Um, one is that I talk too loud. 
Yes. That is a big pet peeve of She his. shouts. I shout, apparently. Makes my head hurt. Uh, the other pet peeve is the over-explaining myself <laughs> or telling a story with way too many details because someone doesn't need to hear that. But I feel like in order for someone to understand, I need to give them all of the information. There are times where you tell stories and I'm like, man, where are we going? <laughs> and I'm like, if I interrupt, then we're going to stop the, the train here. I might as well just <laughs> let the train keep going. And then 15 minutes later, I'm like, oh, we've arrived. And oh I know what gosh. the point was. Uh, and then the third one, I would say, <laughs> do you have a third one that's popping up? You're like ready to cut <laughs> in here. <laughs> Go I'm, trying for. To, I'm trying to think of the, I was hoping to learn more about the pet peeves that you have for me. Cause I'm, I honestly do not have good answers, but um, the third one would be picking food out of your mouth. Oh yeah. He does hate that. <laughs> I actually was thinking that the other day when I was picking food out of my mouth, I was like, if someone right. has a pet peeve, it's got to be this if one she, for If Alex. she sees me look over to her when she's picking stuff out of her teeth, she'll like tuck. I'm like, I can see you. You're not I, hiding anything. I literally will like just walk to the bathroom. He's like, where are you going? And I'm like, I can't freaking get this out of my tooth in front of you or I'm going to <laughs> piss the living daylights out of you. So I'd rather just walk away at this point. Oh my gosh. What are the pet peeves that you have for me? Um, my love for country music. <laughs> I don't know if I would say that's a pet peeve. Uh, you do not love that I sit and scroll my phone when we park places. You would love for me just to get out of the car. I don't really care. Okay, I'm over for two. Can you tell me what they are? I really, <laughs> I am blanking. I was hoping to learn more. That's why I put it in the in here. Pet peeves. Um. I'm perfect and she has no. No, I feel like I no. wrote them down one time. Wrote them down. She's keeping or tabs. Or something like this. Oh, uh, okay. Um, but then I I'll I can thinking. never think of them until like literally this says pet peeves question mark. Nothing else. No other context. I Must guess I couldn't even think good. of one. Hmm. A pet peeve of mine of you. Oh, I've got one. Okay. He does not want anyone to mention one word when he is driving he does not want <laughs> any comments on his driving even if it is not good no. do not you even if you are about to miss a turn don't even think about saying isn't this turn coming up here honey don't say it but be prepared to have him backseat drive the whole fucking time. Oh, unfortunately, that is true. I'm working on this. You are. You've caught yourself. I've gotten, I've gotten a little bit better. Yes. You got another one? Um, that was a pretty big one. That one's bad. This is kind of on the same vein as the first one, but you don't like being reminded about things that coming true. up. Well, I, I don't like being reminded of stuff I'm aware of. But I don't always know what you're exactly. aware of. Exactly. That's the annoying thing for both of us. <laughs> so I'll be like, hey, isn't this coming? Yeah, I freaking know. I just don't like being told something a second and third time. It's like, you informed me. I still have time to do the thing. <laughs> and then, you know, and that's when I get frustrated. Oh, my goodness. I, I feel like I definitely have like little things that annoy me. But again, I, I don't try to sit and focus on them. I would say so. one of my pet peeves is how bent out of shape I get of like small stuff. Yeah, sometimes. Like when I am really run down, I get irritated with the most minuscule things. Yeah. But it's like in those moments, again, you get a lot of grace from me because I normally understand why you're run down. So even if you say something that even is like hurtful towards me, I'm just kind of like, he's freaking run down. And I say that's a huge change for me because yeah. I used to take everything personally. Like you're upset. That means you're upset at me when it's like he's allowed to be angry and it not be at you or you're not responsible yeah. for every emotion. That's he something feels. we both got significantly oh, better with. Oh, for sure. So I feel like we, like in those moments, like I'm not even that frustrated because I'm just like, I get it. You're, you're going through it. All right. So what you guys can take away from this episode is that communication. Alex is perfect. Yeah, well, that communication. And what was the second thing? I said honest and vulnerable communication. Honest and vulnerable communication is the, the major key. And I would say the other major key is just constantly working on self and, and working on the relationship with one another. For sure. You're responsible for your own happiness. 
That's something really important. That's true. I can't find all my happiness in you. I had to learn that for sure. One person that does find all of his happiness in both of us is Tucker, and he is whining to do something. So that is true. make I sure you guys <laughs> like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on your favorite listening platform, leave us a review. We love you guys. See you in the next episode. Peace.